track on that left edge. So I'm going to push right just a little bit. Hey there, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk DMR rifle caliber selection. In particular, two of the most common, which would be 556 running the 77 grain SMK and 308 likely running the 175 SMK. Usually in conversation, we'll talk about things like velocity, energy on target, drop, how many rounds can we carry, how effective is the package overall etc. What I want to do in this video though is shoot them side by side because I think the real world performance might surprise many of you. In particular, I believe that the drop out of the 77 grain from a 14 and a half inch barrel is almost identical to the drop of the 175 SMK coming out of a 16 inch 308 barrel. So what I want to do in this video, I'm going to chronograph this 308 rifle, plug that into my shooter app, pull a drop chart, and then use that drop for both of these rifles at 300, 500, and hopefully 800 yards to give you a look that when it comes to drop in particular, the 5.56 out of this package is almost identical to the 308. So I want to give you a look at real world performance out to distance with both of these rifles. And then at the end, I'll summarize my thoughts of how these two calibers stack up in a DMR roll. So from here, we're going to move into a quick gear review where I'm going to give you a close-up look at each of the rifles, optics, and ammo packages that we'll be running. Then we'll move down to 100 yards. We'll shoot some groups. I'll get the velocity out of this 308 so I can build that drop chart. And then we'll move out to steel where we'll put rounds on steel again using the drop chart out of the 308 for both rifles so that you can see how 5.56 truly stacks up with regards to drop and long-range performance. So if you like the sounds of that, let me know in the comments which one of these calibers are you choosing for a DMR rifle. Are you already running a 5.56? For what reason did you choose 5.56? Or are you a 308 fan? And if you are, I'd love to hear why. Now with that, let's move into the gear review and then we'll start shooting. Now when I think DMR rifle, I'm thinking of a package that allows me to make close-up hits with relative ease while still providing enough accuracy to push out to distance effectively. In my mind, I'm thinking 600 to 800 yards is kind of the furthest window where a DMR rifle might be employed. And in my mind, 77 grain out of a 5.56 and the 175 out of a 308 are both very effective in that scenario. Now, both of the rifles in front of me here are set up to be fairly similar because I wanted things like optics, stocks, triggers, etc., to be the same so that when I'm shooting these rifles, we're purely looking at the performance of each rifle and the caliber that we're shooting. So with that said, how is each rifle set up? So my 5.56 rifle is one that I've had on the channel here several times. The lower is a Knight SR15. It's my SBR lower. It has the Knight's two-stage trigger in it. And then the upper is my Colt 6920 upper that I actually put a 14 and a half inch Colt SOCOM barrel in years ago. It's a one in seven twist. 14 and a half inch barrel, and velocity should be running about 2650 feet per second. For an optics package, this will be the same for both rifles. This is a Night Force Attacker F1 with a Tremor 3 reticle in it, 4 to 16 power, and when I'm shooting, I'll likely be in that 10 to 16 power range depending on how far we're pushing. For ammo out of the 5.56 rifle, I'm going to be shooting IMI. 77 grain SMK. This is a factory load. I've had great luck with it out of multiple rifles. And I believe it's very fair and representative of what many of you might be running out of a DMR type rifle that you have. For the 308 package, I'm running my Knight's Armament SR25 ECC rifle. And again, this is a rifle that's been on the channel many times. It's a very effective rifle, and I've made a ton of hits with it through the years. Trigger, this has a Geisley SDE, so it's a little bit different than the SR15 lower, but still it's the same concept of a two-stage match trigger. And then the upper is a factory ECC upper with a 16-inch, I believe it's one and 11 and a quarter inch twist barrel, and it shoots the 175 SMK very well. This rifle I'm actually gonna be running suppressed with my Surefire SOCOM 7.62 Mini Suppressor. 
running that just because it was already on the rifle from where I shot the 308 Battle Zero, I didn't feel like pulling it off and I enjoy shooting suppressed. I really don't think having the suppressor on this rifle is going to impact any of the results that you'll see in this video, so I believe it's very fair. Optics package also running the Attacker F1 4 to 16 with the Tremor 3 reticle in it. So, very effective package. This one should be running about 2,500 feet per second with factory Winchester Match M118 LR ammunition. So, again, I feel like factory ammo is very representative of what many of you will be running. So, that's what I want to try to shoot in this video. Now, from here, let's move into the shooting. We'll move into 100 yards. 300, 500, 800. We might push further depending on results, but we'll see. So let's do it. So first up at 100 yards, let's check our group and zero on the 556 with the 77 grain IMI. I'm gonna put those five rounds on that bottom dot. There's quite a bit of mirage out there, but we'll give it our best. Looks like a pretty solid group down there. We'll take a close-up look after I shoot the 308. Next up, we'll put five rounds of M118LR through the 16-inch 308 at 100 yards. I'm going to put these on the top dot. All right, pretty solid group out of the 308. We'll walk down and take a close-up look. So here we are taking a close-up look at our 100-yard groups and our zero. So first we shot the 556 at the bottom dot. You can see those five rounds are about an inch and a half. So 1.5 MOA is decent. Before we stretch out to steel, I'm going to bump that up and right a tenth to fine-tune my zero. Then we shot the 308 on the upper dot five rounds and it measures about an inch and a quarter so 1.25 MOA so both of these are showing pretty decent accuracy for a DMR type rifle a little bit better on the 308 that could have been me could have been the Mirage on this 308 I'm going to bump my zero down a tenth before we stretch out to steel so with that let's push out to steel after I adjust my zero and zero out my turrets so now let's push back to steel. We'll start easy with a 10 inch circle at 300 yards. Because we're going to use the 308 dope, I'm going to start with the 308 rifle first all the way through the video so that we can confirm the drop that we have is accurate. So at 300 yards, after I plug this into my shooter app, it's calling for 1.4 mils of elevation. So I'm going to hold over 1.4. My wind flag is pushing just a little bit from right to left, but it's next to nothing, so I'm just going to hold dead center for the first round. So here we go, 300 yards, 1.4. Impact, almost dead center. Impact, low. Impact, right edge. All impacts. Really easy work at 300 yards. I'd say that 1.4 mils of elevation is pretty solid. Next up, let's give the 556 a go at 300 yards on the 10 inch plate. Got five rounds of IMI 77 grain loaded up, and we're going to hold the exact same 1.4 mils that we did with the 308 rifle. Wind flag is pushing just a little bit, kind of to the right to left, but I'm going to hold dead center just like the 308.
So four of those five hit. They're right at the top of the plate. So it seems like maybe I'm closer to 1.2-ish mils to 300 yards with the 5.56. Five, so a little bit flatter right there, but a solid group. I suspect the one miss probably slipped over the top of the plate. From here, let's push back a little bit further. Now I've pushed out to 535 yards on a two-third Zipzik. Again, we'll start with the 308 with the M118 LR. And at 535 yards, I'm calling for four mils of elevation. So we'll start by holding four mils. I'm gonna go dead center. My wind flag is pushing a little bit right to left, but this will give us an idea of what the wind looks like between the two calibers. So here we go, four mils dead center on the plate. Okay, impact in the low left. All right, so that's actually a beautiful group there on the lower part of the plate. So it looks like my dope actually was more like 4.2 to get out there to 535. So running a little bit lower. Now we're going to push this 308 out to 830. And then I'll come back and we'll shoot the same course of fire with the 556 to see how they compare. Let's give the 556 a go at 535 yards. Now remember the 308 called for four mils of elevation and I ended up at about 4.2. With the 556, I'm gonna start with four mils to center and I'm gonna hold center of the plate just like I did on the 308. Packed on that left edge, so I'm gonna push right just a little bit. where I was aiming. Off the right edge. impact so we got four out of five i think the one miss might have gone low right from what i can tell the 556 is actually running closer to four mils of elevation that's called for so a little bit flatter than the 308 next up we'll push out to 830 yards next up we'll push the 308 out to 830 yards on a full size ipsic i've got five rounds of m118 lr loaded up and according to the shooter app I need eight and a half mils of elevation to get out there to 830 yards. Now again, my flag is pushing a little bit right to left, but in order to get an idea of what the wind is doing, I'm gonna send the first round dead on. So here we go, eight and a half elevation dead on with the wind. Dropped a little bit low right or low left. So actually, I'm going to come up to about 8.8 .8 and right edge. Back.
Ooh, that could have been me. That was high right. 8.8 right edge. Impact. So, looks like my actual elevation with the 308 was about, I'm actually going to call that 9 mils. And we're holding right edge. Again, a pretty good group. I think that one that just flew high was actually me. I didn't have a great position on that one, but now let's swap over to the 556 five, and run through these same two targets and see where we end up with it. So now let's push the 556 five, out to 830 yards. Now, if you remember with the 308, I started out at eight and a half mils, but ended up at about nine. So I've actually loaded up 10 rounds because the 556 five, is really running out of steam out there at 830. I'm going to start with a nine mil elevation hold see where we impact, and then correct from there. So hopefully we're close, but again, we're really kind of running out of steam with this 14 and a half inch 5.56. Five, so full size Zipsic, 830 yards, nine mil hole to start. And my windage flag is pushing straight back. So I'm just gonna go dead center on wind for the first round. All right, so quite a bit low. I'm gonna call that go up to 10 mils and a dead wind hold. Impact. 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 Actually, with that, I'm not going to shoot all 10 rounds because we just went four for five. Way better performance than I expected. But as you can see, we're running about a mil lower than the 308 was. So out to this distance, the 223 was actually a little bit flatter. But now that we've pushed out to further distances, we're dropping a bit more with that 556. Five, but really impressed with that performance. Four for five at 830 with a 14 and a half inch shooting 77 grain. So given the relatively good performance out of each caliber at 830 yards and the fact that I've still got some ammo left, I thought it'd be fun to try to push a little bit further out. So I've got my full size Ipsic set up out there at 1,020 yards. And again, we'll start with a 308. So based on what I saw at 830, I did make a small tweak to the BC to try to get my dope a little bit more accurate. So this is calling for 12.9 mils to 1,020 yards. Here at the shooting position, we've got a pretty nasty wind in our face. At the target, it's not quite as bad. So for windage, I'm just gonna hold dead on for the first round and see where we're at. 10 rounds at 1,020. Wind flag is pushing just a bit to the right, so I'm gonna favor left edge. Impact with the first round. Looks low on the plate. I'm going to come up a tenth. It's 13 mils. Off that right edge. Off the left. Still looks low. I'm going to come up two tenths. And go dead on. Impact. Impact. Those are all stacking in. Again, a bit low. So I'm going to come up another two tenths. Hold it. 
dead on. No call on that one. Off that right edge. Come left a half. Impact. Impact. So I believe that was six impacts. I ended up at 13.4 mils for those last three impacts, which looked good. All right, so it took me just a couple of minutes to swap the tack cam over to the 556. Now we'll send 10 rounds of 77 grain IMI at 1,020. My app is calling for 14.7 mils of elevation. That's after a small tweak to the BC based on what we saw at 830 yards. So again, we have a little bit of a headwind here at the shooting position, not quite as much down at the target, but the 308 had a half mil left to make the impact. So that's what I'm gonna start with. No call. I'm gonna cut that back to left edge of plate. I was just off the left edge. Let me go dead on the plate. Impact. Up low, left edge of the plate. Impact. No call. Low right. So I'm going to go back to a half left. It's off the left edge. So three tenths. I'm going to come up a tenth. No call. Whoa, way high. So really tough with the 5.56. Five, the consistency doesn't feel like it's there. We're definitely beyond that transonic, subsonic range. A lot easier to spot the impacts with the 308 as well. It's really hard to see those misses with this 5.56 five, out there. So with that, let's do a little bit of a wrap up. So that concludes the shooting portion of the video. If you've made it this far, I really appreciate you sticking around. From here, we're gonna move into a quick summary where I'll compare what I saw out of each rifle while shooting them and then run through my thoughts at how they each stack up as far as DMR rifle options. Now, before I do that, I'd love to hear in the comments, what are your thoughts? Is there anything you saw in this video that surprised you? Is there anything that impressed you out of either one of these rifles? Let me know, I'd love to discuss it down below. Now with that, shooting wise, what did we see? At 100 yards, in my opinion, we saw very acceptable performance out of each rifle. The 5.56 laid down a 1.5 MOA group, which isn't exactly great, but it's very effective, and we showed that throughout the video. I didn't chronograph this rifle because, again, my plan was to shoot the 308 drop and show you how they compare because, as I mentioned earlier, the drop is very similar out of each of these packages. At 100 yards, the 308 performed really well. It laid down a five round group at 1.25 MOA which again is very effective, and we replicated that performance multiple times throughout the video. I did chronograph this, and I got a speed of 2,500, really consistent velocity, and again, that's what I used to build my drop chart that was shot throughout the video with each rifle. From there, we pushed out to 300 yards, and at 300 yards, we saw great performance out of each rifle. The 308 called for 1.4 mils of drop, and as you saw, we were able to connect five out of five times on that 10 inch plate. So no problem, our drop was spot on with this rifle. Swapped over to the 5.56, and we only connected four out of five times. And if you notice, the impacts were all just a little bit high on the plate. So the 5.56 was shooting a little bit flatter. 
I measured it at about 1.2 mils versus the 1.4 of the 308. So a little bit flatter shooting out to 300 yards, and flatter shooting is always an advantage. Next up, we pushed out to 535 yards where we engaged a two-thirds ipsic. There, the 308 called for four mils of elevation. And what we actually saw downrange where my impact's a little bit low on the plate, a beautiful group, probably one-ish MOA, but I measured it at about 4.2 mils of drop versus the four that were called for. We swapped over to the 556, and this one ended up shooting true to the four mils that were called for. So again, the trend is the 556 is shooting just a little bit flatter than the 308, and that's an advantage. Next up, we pushed out to a full-size Ipsic at 830 yards, where we had great performance out of each rifle. The 762 connected three out of five times. We called for 8.5 mils, but what I ended up as my solution was nine mils. So just a little bit more drop than was called for. And that's what we saw also at 535 yards with this rifle. So three out of five rounds, I believe one of the misses was my fault. I didn't have a great position and that round slipped just a little bit high on the plate. Likely me, but three out of five, 60% hit ratio on a full size Ipsic, I believe is very acceptable for a 16 inch 308 rifle. We swap over to the 556 and we had awesome performance. We actually connected four out of five times at 830 yards on a full size Ipsic. I started out shooting the nine mils that we used for the 308 on the 556. And if you notice that dropped low, so I had to come up to 10 mils and that's where I then connected with the next four rounds. So while 556 was a little bit flatter out to 530 yards, when we pushed out to 830, we saw the advantage swap over to the 762. From there, I still had rounds left, and I was happy with the performance out of each rifle, so we pushed out to 1,020. And 1,020 is where we really saw the difference between the two calibers become apparent. At 1,020, the 7.62 was able to connect six out of 10 times. My app called for something like 12.8 or 12.9 mils, if I remember correctly. While shooting, I ended up at about 13.3, 13.4, so just a little bit more drop than was called for. I later corrected for that in my BC in the app, but in summary, six out of 10 on a full size Ipsic at 1,020, 16 inch 308, in my opinion, is really solid performance. We had a headwind, so not a ton or left or right, so decent conditions to be shooting this package. When I went to the 5.56, that's where I had a challenge. This rifle called for something like 14.8 mils, so again, more drop than the 7.62, but I really struggled to make my impacts out there. And I believe that's because the 77 grain was pushing beyond that transonic and subsonic transition, making it rather inconsistent. So what we saw out there at 1,020 out of this rifle was two impacts out of 10, and we'll discuss why here in just a second. So overall, really happy with the performance, of both of these rifles, I feel like out to 800-ish yards, they're both really evenly matched, and they're both very similar trajectory. I think we saw that, and I hope I showed that in this video. When it comes to drop, really cool how close they are. When you're shooting a BDC style scope, that's important to keep in mind because maybe you can use one BDC for multiple calibers. Something to try for yourself. Now, my thoughts, how do these actually stack up as far as shooting experience? We'll start with the 5.56. The 5.56 actually has a lot of pros that make this a great DMR choice, especially if you're only shooting out maybe to 600-ish yards. Pros to the 5.56, it's a lighter, more maneuverable package that allows you to carry more rounds both on your person and in the magazine. I really like how handy this rifle setup is. Even the SOCOM weight barrel is a little bit heavier than a standard GI barrel. But with that, it's still a much more maneuverable and easy to shoot package compared to this SR25 or compared to the 308 AR. So size, weight, maneuverability, definitely the edge goes to the 5.56. Also like how it was rather flat shooting all the way out there to 800 yards. Also very effective out to 800 yards in terms of making hits. Maybe one of the cons of 5.56, I'm sure you've already said in the comments, would be terminal performance or effectiveness of the bullet to actually stop a threat. That's something we can debate in the comments. I'm purely talking ability to put rounds on a target. And this package was very effective at doing that. Cons of the 5.56, I'm going to go with terminal performance. Definitely, that is a drawback to 5.56. But I'd rather have a rifle 
and make a hit than a bigger caliber and make a miss. So very effective package, really easy to shoot, really enjoy shooting this. Another pro of this is the light recoil and the ability to make rapid follow-up shots. So definitely pro goes to 5.56. 7.62 definitely has its own pros as well. Certainly, I'm sure you've already mentioned in the comments, terminal performance of a 7.62 is solid. Can't argue with it. It's very effective, a ton of energy on target. The other pro of the 308 that I hope you noticed in the video was the ability to spot your own shots. Whether that was a miss or an impact on the plate, the 308 at every distance gives you much more visible feedback versus the 556. So if you're trying to shoot a DMR out to those further distances, in my opinion, the 308, while it has a lot of drop, makes it easier because you can spot your impacts. That was my challenge at 1020 with the 556. I really couldn't see where my misses were going. Versus with a 308, I could spot, I think, almost every miss and make a correction. So drawbacks to the 308, definitely it's heavy. There's only 20 rounds in the mag, less rounds on your person, more recoil. But with enough training, you can become very effective at shooting this rifle relatively fast. I think you'll see in the Tacticam, when my position was solid, this rifle moves very little off target, allowing you to make fast follow-up shots if you need to. Definitely not as fast as the 5.56, but no slouch. So how do these stack up? Again, it's going to come down to your individual use. Myself, I'm a 308 fan. Primarily because I'm usually trying to push out to pretty far distances. I really like that ability to spot my own impacts easily. I like the dust signature. I like the plate to move. And the 308 gives me that all the way out to 1,000 yards. In my mind, this 5.56 is a 600 to 800 yard gun, while this 16 inch 308 allows me to effectively go to 800 and maybe even a little bit further as we showed in this video. So again, would love to hear in the comments, what did you think? Is there anything you'd like to see in future content compared between these two rifles or different calibers? Let me know. If you've made it this far, really appreciate you sticking around. That said, I hope you'll help me grow this channel. We've seen a ton of growth recently, and I think each of you that have joined the channel here in the past couple of months, it really means a lot. This thing is growing really fast. There's a ton of momentum, and it's your interaction that's going to help me continue growing this channel and allow me to continue putting out content. So if you like this, give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what you thought, and most of all, subscribe. There's a ton of content that I've got in the works, so I'd love you to subscribe and be on the list so that when I drop that next video, you're one of the first people to see it. Don't forget to check me out on Instagram at Mountains Mullets America. It's a great place for us to interact. I'll give you a look at what I'm working on. We can chat about maybe future videos, or you can let me know video ideas there. Thanks for watching. Hope you'll join me in my next video. There's a ton in the works, so make sure we stick around. Keep an eye out.